Oh, a Sicilian! A Sicilian! Right there, Mario Sicilian! Oh, yeah. It looks like one, but there's actually none native to Japan, so... That's not a Sicilian? Previously on Breaking Trail, we managed to come across one of the most elusive reptiles in all of Japan, the Japanese ground snake. This fossorial animal is almost never seen by humans, and we uncovered it by gently flipping a decomposing log in one of the country's most ancient forests. Oh, snake, 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 right here. Sweet, wow, it almost looks like a rubber bow. Look at that. We are exploring in the Totori Prefecture, a remote stretch of wilderness in southwestern Japan. Our goal is to share with you some of the animals that call this forest home, while also admiring the breathtaking beauty of its timeless landscape. After releasing the ground snake back into its shadowy refuge, we soon after stumbled upon a creature that could be considered a candidate for a science fiction narrative. All right, this log is actually flippable. See how long a lot of these are? Oh yeah. I thought they'd be easier to move. They're not. All right, this one is busted in half. Let's see what we got. Oh, a Sicilian! A Sicilian! Look, look, look! Right there, Mario Sicilian! Oh yeah. Hang on a second. Look, 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 look. Right there. It looks like one, but there's actually none native to Japan. So that's gotta be something else. That's not a Sicilian? No. Here, let's bring it back down here on this log. That's, dude, that's gotta be a Sicilian. Check this out. So there are no Sicilians in Japan, but my immediate instinct was, oh, a Sicilian. It looks exactly like one. Now, my hands are not real moist, so what I actually wanna do, I'm gonna set it down there and get some water on my hands. It's gotta be some kind of a worm. Oh it, yeah. We just run a little bit of water onto it. Oh, I like that. Okay, here we go. Um, let me just sort of analyze it first. Uh, I don't think there are any like venomous or poisonous worm species, at least not to my knowledge, but look at the head. Yeah, it's definitely a worm now that I'm seeing it out on this log and it's moving about. Whoa, 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 it's got a proboscis, look at that. It's got a little mouth part that comes out. It is extremely rigid, very muscular feeling. I guess we should find out if it bites or not. Let's see. Oh, it's tasting me. Definitely no biting mouth parts like the blood worm. Whoa. This is crazy. The most bizarre looking worm I ever thought we would have come across. Look at the top of it. It's blue and iridescent. Can you see that if I just slightly angle it in the light? I mean, if you held uh, the Sicilian we found in Costa Rica next to that, it'd be tough to tell. Well, the reason that I thought it was is look at the belly. The underside is very light in coloration and the top is dark, very indicative of something that is fossorial. Keeps the camouflage from up above, but from underneath, it doesn't need to be dark in color. Now, unlike the earthworms that we see in the United States, there's no distinct middle section to this worm, which is another reason that I thought it was a Sicilian. Look how far it's capable of stretching out. Look at the length of that worm. Whoa. You can actually see inside its belly. You can see whatever it's been eating is inside there. There's a chance this is a predatory worm. Uh, a good chance, yeah. I mean, with that proboscis up front. I assume they could be eating small little microorganisms, mites and small ants. It's actually really cool when I place it down on the moss and you can see it, the contrastiness against that green. As we know, worms have no proper skeleton. It's just like one big muscular slinky. And look at that, when I place it down in the moss, it curiously moves from spot to spot and it's using its mouth to investigate all of this moss. I imagine sensing for chemicals to help it find direction because from what I can see, it does not have any eyeballs. Now that is definitely the front end and this is definitely the back end. Wow, look how long it's stretched out now. Crazy, I bet this thing is close to a foot in length when fully extended. Well, Japan is certainly full of all kinds of interesting surprises and this dense forest ecosystem is so rich with wildlife and a lot of animals that must stay out of the sun. We've got the sun directly overhead right now and even with it cascading through some of those top branches, everything in here stays completely shaded. Everything is moist. Look at this environment. All the pine needles are completely saturated. The ground is sopping wet. You have all of this moss. It's the perfect place for an alien looking creature like this to live. 
pick it back up here. Let's get one more close look. Come here, buddy. And I noticed there's not a whole lot of slime coming off this worm. No, I mean, I've definitely been getting my hands wet with water just to make sure that I don't suck any of the hydration from its skin, but it is not slimy like the earthworms that we have in the States. Go ahead, Mark, put your hand out there and uh, just feel that worm. Whoa. How about that? Doesn't feel like the earthworms at home, does it? Whoa. Very strong too, very yeah. muscular. It, it almost feels like it has a bit of a skeleton. Right, right, it, yeah. it does. But as we know, worms do not have proper skeletons. They also don't have exoskeletons. They're essentially just lengths of internal muscle. And when I laid it down on the log earlier, you could see how it was able to just slink from spot to spot. That segmentation moving just like a slinky. Well, I would definitely say that exploring these deep, dark forests here in Japan have certainly paid off with a number of very cool and bizarre species. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. On the exterior of our planet, we often see animals that we recognize from the pages of books, images on television, or even in person at our local parks. A whole society of creatures are living and thriving beneath our feet. They are bizarre, alien-like, and often considered living nightmares. But the truth is that these animals which appear to be from another planet are more likely to be quiet, skittish, and completely harmless despite their outward appearance. The true oddities of the natural world always seem to captivate us and it brings the Brave Wilderness team great excitement to share them with all of you. Coming this holiday season to a neighborhood mailbox near you, the Brave Wilderness Chance Elves will be delivering the one and only Brave Wilderness Adventure Kit. So if you've been staring out your front window with eyes wide and full of wonder, waiting for the day when something will show up for you and not your parents. This holiday season, all your wildest dreams are about to come true. The Brave Wilderness Adventure Kit is now available, and this subscription box is cooler than any other subscription box in the history of subscription boxes. For all the important details that your parents probably want to know and to learn what's inside the box that makes it so cool, click on the link in the video description below. And happy holidays from our pack to your pack. If you missed part one of this expedition into the remote forests of Japan, make sure to go back and watch as we got the Japanese ground snake one of the country's rarest reptiles, up close for the cameras. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail.